Hello, everyone. You, you don't have to stand all the way out. You can actually get in closer. <laughs> and if you actually stay for the presentation, I hear you get a free shirt, right? That's right. Okay, so I'm uh, Mike Schmidt. I'm Director of Software Engineering at AMD, and I'm going to do a little talk here on 360 video stitching. So we have this product, it's called Project Loom, or Radeon Loom, actually, as we release it into uh, open source. And what it does is it stitches 360 video. So I'm going to flip ahead here a little bit and show you a video. Do we have audio from this PC? That is not that important. I can hear it. Basically talking about how lots of people are shooting 360 videos and you want to post them to YouTube and Facebook and live stream them. The market's really big. These are some examples of 360 video stitching we did with our partner. These were underwater uh, with uh, Radiant Images, our partner in Hollywood. So it's hard to actually see the 360 video without putting on a headset. But you can imagine that you have lots of cameras on some kind of camera rig, and each one is shooting its own individual picture. And I'm going to show you how, real quickly, how we use Chronos standards to actually do this. Uh... I just want to get the card. Okay. Uh, I'm going to so this is showing how two different cameras come together and we find a seam and we, we do the stitching. You can imagine there's many of these images. And you can do this two ways. One is in real time, so right uh, off the camera, do it, stream it. The other way is a higher quality mode where you actually do it in post-processing for like Hollywood style movies. Okay, so that's enough of the video. So the major features of this software, uh, first, first major feature is it's open source. So everyone gets the source code, everyone gets to see it, everyone gets to contribute. It's highly optimized for GPU. Not only is it highly optimized for GPU, it pretty much exclusively runs on the GPU. So you're going to get the highest throughput possible. We currently handle up to 8K by 4K videos. So right now, if you walk around the show floor and you see some videos, almost exclusively, they're only going to be 4K by 2K or less, right? So we already handle videos that are higher resolution than what everyone's headsets are able to use today. We handle up to 31 cameras. So you can have a camera rig that has 31 cameras. You can have five overlapping positions, five overlapping pixels at each position. You can add and replace components of this software with your own. So it's open source, you could do it anyway, but we actually built the API so that you can add in your own modules to it as well. And we do what do we call uh, virtual camera overlays and underlays. So you have a camera rig, I'll show you a picture one in a minute. You can actually insert a virtual camera somewhere into the 3D spherical spa space. So for example, you have a camera with a tripod, you don't really want to be seeing the tripod, so you might want to insert some JPEG or some video over the top of it. And you can do that in real time live. Right? You can insert a live video over it as well. What that means is you can also insert any, any other content you want. So you could stick a PowerPoint inside of it up on a wall in, in a room or any, anything like that. And we, we have examples that show that. And like I said, you can do real time and offline. So this is an example of a camera rig. So we built this camera rig to shoot this movie, Bahubali 2 in India. Uh, the movie was shot last fall. Uh, it's coming out in about two months in India. Uh, Bahubali 1, the predecessor to this movie, was the biggest grossing film in history in India uh, at the time it was released. It's been surpassed by one, I think, since then. You can see the camera rig up here on a big boom. So this camera, we can take the 
images from this camera through the SDI interface, capture them into a PC, and real-time preview it in a headset so the director of the movie, while they're filming, can actually see what's going on. So this is an example of what the overall block diagram might look like. You have uh, either coming from a file or from cameras, goes into the loom stitching modules, and then you can then stream it to the cloud, to a headset. Uh, you can also go SDI out to another PC and, and have a local headset. So a, somebody can be previewing what's going out live over the internet while you're watching it. Another alternative is you could just record it to a file for later processing. This is what the overall software stack looks like. So all the green parts are the parts AMD is providing as Project Loom. The blue parts are existing components that came from various places. So for example, OpenVX, which comes from Kronos, OpenCL, which comes from Kronos, or the, the standards do. We actually use AMD components there. Uh, we also use, can use FFmpeg to do encoding and decoding for each camera. Lots of cameras will encode, and you'll have to decode them live before you can stitch them. And all that uh, runs, you can see these gray parts are parts where any developer could add their own components in. So you can build an application that controls everything, that uh, tells it where you're getting the, the, uh, the source video from. That goes through our Loom I.O. Uh, modules. Uh, and then after you stitch it, where does it get sent to? So it could get sent to an encoder, it could get sent to the internet, it could get sent to another headset. Okay, you're not going to be able to read this unless you get up really close. This, so we built a scripting language into Loom that allows you to build an entire uh, stitching application in this much code. So this is this is basically a, a, a batch file, if you will, that says, okay, I have this many cameras and this many, and this kind of lenses, and I want to stitch them to this resolution. So you don't really have to even write, like, pages and pages of code. This example does that whole thing. You can still write all the C code you want, but... So this is what the pipeline looks like. So you have your cameras, you bring it in, you decode from your cameras, you do a color space conversion, you lens correct it based on the geometry of the lens, you warp it into what's called an equirectangular space. That's like a so similar to the idea of like a Mercator projection through a map of the world. So it's a flat representation of the sphere. We adjust the exposure based on each camera is going to be seeing different lighting conditions. We balance them all out. We find seams in the overlap. We merge it all together and we blend it so that you can't see where the seams are. And then we output it to an encoder or we can output it directly streamed over to the internet. And you can replace any of the components with your own. So if you don't like the same find that we have, you can insert your own component at that point. And this is what the actual PC system might look like. You have a whole bunch of cameras. You bring them into the graphics chip. You stitch it. And then you send it out to another PC to actually view it. Alternatively, you can go to the cloud. Now this is a future project, and we actually have uh, a partner that we're going to be demonstrating in a couple months where we actually can do 8K stitching. So 4K is sort of the normal now, going beyond 4K is much more difficult. Uh, we're going to be showing that as soon as they get this board ready. And that's it. So questions? Anyone? How many cameras could you do? I, your mic is not on. <laughs> oh, sorry. And your, that now it is. How many cameras per GPU can you process? How many cameras per GPU can we process? So, it's, there's like about three or, well, there's like about six parameters that go into this, but roughly, uh, the output size is the thing that controls like 75% of the load. So it's not... 
how many cameras can we input per GPU, it's more what size of output can you produce is the bigger question. So we can do 4K output on one GPU, we can do 6K output on one GPU, and we think with our next generation GPU we'll get to 8K output. But going back to the question about how many cameras can you do, we can do 16 cameras uh, input into one GPU stitched to 4K output. When we go to 6K and, and 8K, then the number of cameras goes down, but not a whole lot. It goes down to like eight. It's not like it's exactly proportional because the if you remember back in the beginning of the pipeline, only the first two steps were directly related to the cameras coming in. Once you warp them into the echo rectangular space, you sort of did all the work of bringing the data in. All those other steps actually are like three quarters of the, roughly, of the workload. Other questions? So who here, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I was wondering how many cameras do you actually need to, like, bare minimum in order to get a good 360 stitch all the way around? So that's another uh, tricky question. <laughs> good job. <laughs> <laughs> so two is the minimum, <laughs> because one can't see behind you. Right. Uh, so there's lots of cameras that only have two lenses, like dozens of them. So Ricoh Theta is the most popular. Two lenses, they're symmetric. Each one is slightly bigger than 180 degrees, and you basically just have to stitch them together. But that doesn't give you the best cinematic quality video, because those big fisheye lenses are like very distorted at the edges. And even though we can correct the distortion mathematically, that doesn't mean we can correct it optically from the point of view of getting an accurate pixel. Right, the amount of pixels you would have in that area. Would and be yeah, and the down. density of the pixels yeah. is uh, in a fisheye lens is much more dense in the center and then as you get to the edges, the pixels get right. not as dense. So right. the, the accuracy, and you know, the picture is going to look more fuzzy as you get out there. So you really want whole lots of cameras. Okay, but whole lots of cameras then means, oh, more processing time, bigger camera rig. So there's like this trade-off of you want as many cameras as possible to get the best optics, but you want as few as possible to reduce the processing time and to make your camera rig small and light and portable. So they're sort of like opposing things. So somewhere in the middle, there's a happy middle, right? And it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four to eight to twelve, right? But, and the, the other uh, issue is the bigger the camera rig in size, the further away all your actors need to be from the camera so they don't get caught in this parallax zone where they're, they're doing it half. where they get cut in half and there's things on each side of them, right? So, the, the real answer to the question is it depends on what you want to do. It's sort of like you need to be a camera expert to go shoot, understand this. So, so when you go to shoot a, a Hollywood movie, you're actually not going to bring one camera. You're going to bring several cameras that all have different characteristics. And depending on the scene, you're going to use different ones. Uh, microphone. Microphone minutes late. Um, would you be able to show your demo? Yeah, I'll go back to the to the end after we're done with the official uh, recording. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much, and stay around and ask more questions. Three hundred and sixty degree videos created by professionals and consumers have exploded in popularity, with almost a half million three hundred and sixty videos uploaded to Facebook, YouTube, and other social media sites in two thousand and sixteen alone, and is expected to be an eleven point five billion dollar industry by two thousand and twenty five. Delivering a fully immersive spherical view of a scene, 360 videos enable the viewer to watch video in virtual reality from any direction, transforming the experience. 
360 videos are recorded using anywhere from 2 to 24 individual cameras aimed in different directions and recording simultaneously to capture an omnidirectional view. The more cameras used, the higher resolution, therefore the higher quality the final 360 degree experience ends up. A major challenge with creating 360 video involves combining or stitching the output of these multiple camera views into a single seamless video image to create an immersive sense of visual realism. The more cameras used, the more stitching is required. Combining video output from professional grade 360 degree camera rigs using up to 24 cameras can require hours of post-processing and substantial compute resources. Radeon Loom revolutionizes the 360-degree video stitching process, overcoming the formidable technology challenges through massively parallel GPU processing to achieve both real-time live stitching and faster offline stitching of 360 videos. Using AMD's open source implementation of the Kronos OpenVX Computer Vision Framework, Radeon Loom's GPU processing is capable of stitching input from up to 24 cameras to 4K times 2K stitched output in real time and from up to 31 cameras to 8K times 4K offline, including virtual camera overlays, underlays, and watermarking. Radeon Loom delivers the power of professional-grade video post-processing, enabling today's new breed of 360 video filmmakers to create the amazing cinematic VR experiences of tomorrow. For more information, visit www.gpuopen.com.